No, I have not yet. I'm still waiting on someone to have his picture. All right, what I'd like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is show you how to graph an absolute value by using the transformations. And when we have y equals negative 1 half, um, absolute value of x plus 2 plus 5. And when we have and when we have y equals 2 times absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3. If you guys can remember um, our parent function for one of these graphs is, um, let me see if I don't know if I have enough space here. Well, we'll go into this. If you guys remember, here's our, going to be our a, this is our h, and this is our k. Okay? This is our a, this is our h, and our k. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find our vertex. And our vertex is going to be point where the absolute value graph changes direction. So our vertex in this problem is our h and our k. And what we notice is our vertex is going to be um, our h and our k. So if we look at this, h since that's a positive 2, that's actually going to tell us to shift to the left 2. And we spent a good 20 minutes describing why that does, why that is, because if you had y equals x plus 2, we know that at the x-intercept, when y equals 0, x has to be a negative 2. So that's why it's going to be to the left, negative 2, and your, your y would still equal 0 right there. So I'm going to go to the left, negative 2, and then I'm going to go up 5. So I'll roughly have a point right here. Then I'm going to treat my a kind of as like my negative slope. And if that's a, deep, um, a negative 1 half, I know I'm going to go down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. And the one property we know about absolute value functions is it's a mirror on one side to the other side. So again, I'm going to go down 1 to the right 2. So to the left 2. Then down 1 to the left 2 as well. And go ahead and graph that. So that is my first equation. Now, if I want to go ahead and graph the second equation, the same exact thing, the first thing I want to do is if I want to find the vertex. So in looking for the vertex, I'm going to go and say, all right, what is my h and my k? Again, now my h is going to be negative 1. That's going to tell me to go shift 1 to the right, and then go down 3. So my vertex is at h, k. Then, after I have my vertex at h, k, now I'm going to use my a as my slope, which is going to tell me to go up 2 over 1. That's the left one, right? So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And an absolute value, you guys remember, mirrors on the other side. So that is how you would graph this one, just by the transformations. You could also go ahead and use a table of values. The main important thing you use on your table values is to make sure, though, you use a broad enough range of values that you're going to get both sides of your vertex. So that's how you graph absolute functions using the transformations um, right here.